600 boy LA man, LA Capone man, get it to him man. Hey. Those are two boys man. T Rock with number nine man, number nine shooter, you hear me? Black TV bro. OT up Nunu man, you know how we rock it man. I couldn't, it was like, I was seeing it happen like right before my eyes, you know what I'm saying? The murder video came out, that was his first video. Then he hit, hit him with the, him, him and Rondo with the face down. Then this probably was like, like two weeks before, before he got killed or whatever, we was out west. On uh, Sir Mac and Cole and that big Fifi. And me, him and JB, and Spoon, we standing on the corner. He sitting there with his hood on or whatever. And the shorty walked up on him like, man, Joe, I know you. You L.A. Capone, man. He hit him with the shit. Yeah, you, you know. He, like, he, like, cool, yo. he like, yeah, me. So he like, man, Joe, I just want to let you know, man. I fuss with you. I won't be on that hate shit or none of that. We were just listening to that uh, 50 Cent Cake shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And then, like, 10 minutes after that, a car ride passed. Bumped it so loud. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, JB like, bro. Bro, we finna, we finna be on, bro. Like, it was crazy. Though. Like, right before my eyes, though, like, I'm seeing it all just happen. From one video to now, it's like people knowing them. You know just, saying? just Everywhere. crazy. What holiday was that? We was over here, and my daughter, Kai, just like, um, she was rapping something. And Lenar was standing right here by the island, and she was like, yeah, that's my song. Um, Katie got bands, this, cheese keys, and I was like, Lenar, where's your stuff at? Because, you know, she naming them. Like, you on the map, too. Right. And he was like, she'll see, she'll see, I'm coming. <clears throat> so I remember one morning, I guess she was on my iPad or on somebody's phone. And she was like, oh, my God, is that Lenar? He's getting out the bed. <laughs> like, that's Tasha's house. Lenar is on YouTube. <laughs> like, oh, man. Yeah. Keep doing this. That's what's up. It's real. That's what's up. What about when y'all saw his, um... His first initial interview that went viral. We got over a million plus views. It was uh, L.A. Capone and Rondo. Oh, oh my God. I said a million times. Yeah, Let me tell you about uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Look at it. Uh-oh. I looked at it. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like. It was the first. It was like. When I first like. Probably a month before I started. Like Googling him and Googling stuff after I heard 600. I was like, oh my God, my son's gonna be a star. Like, this nigga's gonna be a star. So, but I look at your, I look at the, the, the interview and I keep on hearing Rondo say motherfucking, uh, and motherfucking, uh, motherfucking, uh, like every three words. And I'm like, and Lenard talking regular at first. Then this nigga starts to out. Yeah, because we a motherfucking, uh, and we. This nigga done start dumbing himself down. Like he don't wanna, he don't wanna, he he seemed like he didn't wanna make himself look yeah, like he was yeah. smarter or whatever that Rondo. And when he came in the house, I was like, Lenar, well, no. why you why did you say motherfucking uh all these times on this on this interview? I was like, I don't like this interview. I don't like this interview that you did. I hate it. Ooh. And then after he passed away, I think I looked at it like like I looked at it like so many times. Like I probably can quote words and lines off of it. I looked at it so many times. But I initially hated it. And I remember the day when he died and Rondo came over here. When he came in the door, I was like, oh, there he go. There go your motherfucking up. up. <laughs> <laughs> he just started laughing. Like, I was like, why did y'all say that so many times in the video? It just, it just, it just tripped me out for them to keep saying that. Song separate. I come pick LA up. 
Like, yo, we got this studio for three hours, man. No more than a bullshit in your life. He like, man, I ain't gonna play around. Take me to the crib. He come to the crib, grab his notebook, his CD with his beats on it, go right in there. And one tape on um, so loud, straight, just like that. Like, mm. when I heard that song, though. It was like, oh, yeah, Shorty is not playing. Like, like that's when I started being like, all right, whatever. Video, studio, whatever, just call me. Like, man. Investing in them, huh? Yeah. That's what's Wait, up. Is that the sound when you say he came out acting goofy to out? No, that didn't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> he talking about, we, we geeking over so loud. It's me, JP. Um, my other homie, Lil Ray, he all in the studio. He, we geeking, like, and he come out the booth talking about, um, y'all like that shit? No, I don't, I don't like that shit. I don't think I like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> why, you think, why you think he said he ain't like it? That's, you know, he was, that's, he was just silly, but that's, he, he knowing that we feeling it. He know it's cold, but he trying to, like, you know, like, play the role like he don't know. Oh, right, 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 right. Like trying to play a little role. Waiting on y'all response. So what's what's so is it safe to say your favorite song and video from it is so loud? I I love them all. Yeah. Well, see, uh, uh, what I just like what, what what's your favorite? Just bro. I can't pick a favorite. Either. Man. <laughs> Mama Capone. I like. Uh, is it play? Yeah, like, you know what? You know what's my favorite? And I don't really got a favorite song, but you know my favorite part. Now, 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 talk about um, L.A. As, as a child. I remember you said Bleak that he followed your footsteps as far as football is concerned. So was he an athlete or not really? Yeah. Most definitely. Definitely yeah. an athlete. I remember, but in the beginning, it was hard for me to even give him the run. Like, he used to be walking so slow, he was like a little big head. Pick me up. He'd be walking out, he'd be like, come on, man, you taking too long, man, run. So he would never run. Then all of a sudden, two years later, he'd come back telling me how good he is at football. Like, man, you were just running a minute ago. But I seen the tape, though. But that's, he was living in Atlanta when he was playing football. But I seen the tape. So I'm like, yeah, then I started seeing the MVP trophies coming through. And oh, for real? All that. Man. Yeah, he's for real. Man, so, so he could have went somewhere, like, to the NFL or some college for football. Yeah. What was he, a running back? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when you watched the tapes, did you think, like, man, he really is fast? Yeah. That's crazy. Who, who was this game similar to? Uh, he used to try to uh, model himself after Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Was he into basketball at all or no? No. Just football. Just football. Now, Mama Capone, talk about this transition um, coming from Chicago, taking uh, your son to, to uh, Atlanta. It, he, was, he was so different. Like, he Living in Chicago, then I let him go and live with his daddy in Atlanta. He was there for like about five years or whatever. I think me letting him go there, it was like the hardest thing I ever did. I don't let nobody see me cry. Nobody. But when he got ready to go, I cried like a baby. And I cried in front of his daddy wife. I didn't want to see me cry, but I cried like a baby. Like, I didn't want him to go, but I didn't want to not let him go. I wanted him to have that time to grow up with his dad, you know. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to be around his father. So I let him I let him go. He came home every Christmas, every summer, you know, spring break, all that kind of stuff. He was always always home. I was always sending him something. I stayed sending him something. The other kids used to be, why you study sending him stuff? He don't live with us no more. But I stay sending them hot crunchy curls, all type of stuff. All the they, Chicago food. Yeah, that they didn't have. Home run in pieces. I used to get them shipped from home run in to Atlanta in dry ice, so he can have home run in pieces. Wow. Like he was, that was my like my baby. 
He was the king. Yeah, he was real life. That, that <laughs> what people say, King L.A., that ain't something that just came about after he died. I've been calling him the king since he's been born. Mm. Like, for real. Gave the dude the crown and everything. <laughs> wow. How long was he in, um, in the A4? Uh, like five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, he lived there for like five years. Was it tough? And then when he, when he came back home, it was like it was it was I think it was like hard for him because Chicago was so different from Atlanta. You know, it was like slow motion. He was going to Cascade and when, you know, the skating and, and all that stuff. And he when he came back home he was wearing skinny tight tight red, tight red color, color <laughs> tight color jeans with chains hanging off of him. Like the biker boy. Yeah. He, yeah, he used to have a biker he used to have them skateboarder clothes. That's the kind of clothes he used to wear when he came back home. And it's like I don't know, all of a sudden he just like kinda um when he got in eighth grade he came back home when he got in eighth grade, his father passed away. And then that's where um this young man right here in the back come in at. He the one got him outside. Cause he, he used to be scared. He used to run everywhere. He used to run to McDonald's, run back home. He wouldn't, then, everywhere he run. Remember when he stopped running? When we was living on Calumet. And he was like, um, I was like, where you coming from? He was like, from on 39th. Looking just like this, doing like this. I'm like, what you was on 39th doing? I walked to Doom. I got Pinky some fries with mouth sauce. I went next door to the stove. I was like, oh, okay. He like, people on 39th. That's where, that's, that's where people be at. I was like, oh, that's right. That's start changing. So, he changed it over. He readjusted. So, <laughs> starting in eighth grade, that's when you realize, like, oh, man, he back here in Chicago, and, and, he, and, he, and, and he get adjusted quick, yeah, huh? he was changing up from the biker boy stuff to the Armani X change and the Adidas track suits and you know all of that type of stuff. From the stick on earrings, the little <laughs> stick of earrings. Oh yeah. He put the little stickers on and, and then he got his ear pierced with some diamonds, some real diamonds in them. That's how you know that was my boy though. Like I remember when he first came back from Atlanta, he was down like 25, 30 chapters behind in math. Yeah. He like, I hate math, I don't want to do it man. Woo -woo. I'm like, Joe, you know, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I did every chapter for him, like 30 chapters of math homework. Mm. He come back like, damn, Joe, my teacher said that's the best, the best math she ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you already know. I helped him out, though. I could never let him fall behind. Like, you feel me? I did every chapter. Like, I took my time. Like, my time.